Greetings, salutations. All right, so we're just starting. We're going out. All right, so we're just winging this because Mary's gone. So uh, she's at a wedding. I guess her son is getting married. So just want to bless that. Pray that the Lord is on that with them and the Spirit is just there with her and helping her be a minister, a minister to them and encouraging them. Um, so this is the first time I've ever done this, so this is completely out of my comfort zone. But uh, just want to thank you guys for coming. Just uh, and I'm just gonna pray and blow the shofar, and we'll get on with worship and praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the one who died for our sins. He uh, took away the law that held us back, so that we can actually get to know Him and have a relationship with the Lord. But, uh, all right, and Jesus, we just thank you for your spirit. We thank you for the blood that washed away our sins. We thank you for the cross that helped us to allow us to be a representation of dying to our flesh, that we could actually live for you and have a, have a fighting chance. In your name, amen. First time also, brother, so don't feel out of place. Uh, I'm kind of in, not in my comfort zone either, but God's got something for each and every one of us today here. And uh, let's just uh, let's just uh, let him do his will and uh, worship God how you worship God. And uh, I was asked to do the song service because my, my brother's had pneumonia. So I'm just going to do a couple of songs off my album, which has uh, a lot to do with people who have done drugs, a lot of people who have been a drug addict, been to prison, been there, done that. And uh, I just want you to be blessed today. And, and, you know, I don't know if you've done any kind of drugs that matter, which none of them matter except the one that God has. It's called LSD, Love, Salvation, and Deliverance. This is everything you're hearing is a, is a true testimony of what I've been through and what God can do for you. So if you get, if you fall down and get back up, don't stay down. Living in the fast lane, driving on the edge. I was headed for destruction and moving pretty fast. Running from the law, man, trying to get away. Looking for a fix, just trying to make it through the day, yeah. Fit my alcohol, in and out of jail. If I forget the words, they're already there, so it's a voiceover, so that's good. Looking I was cool, only looking like a fool. Getting hammered every day like the devil's little tool. How many of you been there and done that? Everything I tried that the world had to give, it wasn't working for me, man. I thought the same way to live. Sick and tired of being sick and tired, I wanted out. So I started looking elsewhere, the same thing I said about. Then someone told me about a dealer who had what I need, and I ain't talking about pot, coke, alcohol, or speech. So I went to meet a man in a church real close, and what he gave me was so good, I think I almost overdosed. I 
Cost you all your money, cause they'll give it to you free. Won't make you run from the law or drive your car into a tree. No headaches, hangovers, or feeling like a clown. Cause when you're dealing with the Lord, you don't ever come down. No sign effects, only peace, joy, and love, power, and wisdom, and healing from above. I said, Love, salvation, deliverance. He reached down and he touched me when I didn't have no sense. You're homeless or helpless in the penitentiary. Just try what the Lord has. I promise you'll be free. Now there's one more thing that may happen when you score. You may become addicted and keep seeking for more. That is a fact. This next song, how many got haters? How many got haters on you? you got, everybody's got some haters. You know, whether they're hating for the right reason or the wrong reason, we all got haters. This song, go like this right here. Go like this. Everybody do like this. This is called Shake the Haters Off. And it, you know, when you have tribulation, which you will have tribulation, just remember this. <laughs> Kind of in your, in your face double rap song. But it's, it's, hope it blesses y'all. Well, I don't rap trash and I don't bump junk. I be jamming it for Jesus from the subs in my trunk. The devil keeps hating because I'm celebrating the fact that I'm free. The power sin eliminating. Why are all these demons always hating on me? I tell you why. Because I'm covered in the blood and the devil can't touch me. It might have skipped. Like he's trying to do right now. It's an old. It's this is one of my. Uh oh, that's not good. While he's working on that, it's when I started. When I got my housing and started trying to get my life together for God, you know. Uh, it's been a blessing. It's been a blessing, but it's, it's, there's been some sacrifices that have had to be made. And uh, just keep your heads up. Just be encouraged. You know, I mean, when I got my my, my new home, my new place of residence, I had nothing. Now I got so much stuff, I don't know what to do with it. So I fix to have a big giveaway, guys. So I'm, I'm gonna get with Miss Mary and hopefully help you guys out with something I don't need. So thank you, brother. Can't you see, you old Pharisee, what you're doing to me? You think you're hurting me, but you're helping me, producing patience in me. You're always watching others with your eyes but can't see. I don't care how many stones you throw, I still love you, don't you know? still love you, don't you know? Say not rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Whatever you got to offer, it ain't ever gonna please us. It's gonna be a lie. Shake the haters off. So go like that. Shake the haters off. Shake the haters off. Amen. Got to shake those haters off. <clears throat> shake that. When you live your life for God, people are going to hate, but that's just more reason for you to celebrate. 
Count it all joy, turn the other cheek, because when you do that, you're not the one who's weak. Because when you do that, you're not the one who's weak. Persecution is an opportunity. Not to make you weak, but make you strong, you see. It doesn't matter what they say. 70 times 7 will make a demon go away. So just shake them, shake them, shake them, shake them, shake them, shake them, baby, shake them with a shake, shake, shake. Shaking all the haters off, shaking them with love. Shaking, baking, demon, quaking power from above. I shake them from the left and I shake them from the right. Sometimes I'll be shaking haters all through the night. If I don't shake them, how can God break them? Then they'd have a reason to say, man, he'd be faking. Huh? Yeah, I hope so. You can just skip to if you can, or watch you skip to the next one because it's, it's almost over. Number, number 11, I think it was. This is a dramatic song called Break the Chains. And, uh, that's what God will do if you'll let him. I guess you forgot again, again the, power the power of God, and this is talking to the devil. I'll let that talk for a second. And he took the keys of hell and death from you and stomped you and all your followers in the dirt. And then he rose from the grave. All that, and yet you still... Somebody say amen. 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 God is good. All the time and all the time. God is good. There we go. Go again, Satan. On your high horse of hell full of pride and deception. I guess you just don't learn. I guess you forgot once again the power of God when you and all your followers were cast out of heaven like lightning. And then when Jesus went to hell after you thought you destroyed him and he took the keys of hell and death from you and stomped you and all your followers in the dirt and then he rose from the grave. down to the word and then be blessed on that however. God bless you guys. Love y'all. before you know that I'm pretty short uh, both physically and with my sermons um, but so today I think kind of what I'd like to do is just I guess think out loud a little bit there's some stuff that I wanted to um, kind of touch on and we'll see how that goes I, my notes are a little sporadic today but uh, just some things where I thought it was important to kind of tell you uh, how we grow in the Lord a little bit, kind of some of those ways that, you know, if you've ever had thoughts of whether it's suicide or depression or um, just some of those downright 
awful thoughts where you're just like, I don't, I'm not worth anything. I'm not going anywhere. Um, the Lord is not here for me. He doesn't see me. He doesn't love me. And there's some ways that I feel like in the last probably month or two that I felt like I've been able to combat some of those. Um, as I came to the Lord, I know the suicidal thoughts got fewer and less between just from his saving grace, his love for me, his blood, um, washing away the sins of guilt, shame, and condemnation, and allowing me to have that the fruits of the Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, as I grow and learn how to abide in him. Um, something today, though, we're going to kind of, I'm going to try to hit this a little bit this morning. Um, it's in Isaiah 40. Um, some of my buddies, we were just sitting there, and we ended up kind of starting to read the scriptures and uh, pray a little bit. And it was just encouraging me because it just kind of, it's just, it's just kind of a Job moment in a way where things are hitting you, hitting you hard. And you're like, where, where is the Lord in this? And he answers. So there, 1 Timothy 4, 13, it says, do not neglect their public reading of scriptures so that's what we're going to do a lot of scripture reading today all right so isaiah 40 verse 12 who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and marked off the heavens with a span of the hand and calculated the dust of the earth with a measure and weighed the mountains in balance and the hills in a pair of scales who has directed the spirit of the lord or has taught him as his counselor with whom did he consult and who enlightened him who taught him the path of justice and taught him knowledge and informed him of the way of understanding. In fact, the nations are like a drop from a bucket and are regarded as a speck of dust on the scales. Now look, he lifts up the islands like fine dust and the forests of Lebanon cannot supply sufficient fuel to start a fire, nor are its wild beasts enough for a burnt offering worthy of the Lord. All the nations are as nothing before him they are regarded by him as less than nothing and meaningless. To whom then will you liken God, or with what likeness will you compare him? As for the cast image, as as for the cast image idol, a metal worker casts it, a goldsmith overlays it with gold, and a silversmith casts it with silver chains. He who is too impoverished for such an offering to give to his God chooses a tree that will not rot. He seeks out for himself a skillful craftsman to carve, to set up an idol that will not totter. Do you who worship idols not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth the omnipotence of God and the stupidity of bowing to idols? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers. It is he who stretches out the heavens like a veil and spreads them out like a tent dwell, to dwell in. It is he who reduces the dignitaries to nothing, who makes the judges rulers of the earth meaningless. Scarcely have, the, and have they been planted, scarcely have they been sown, scarcely has their stock taken root in the earth. But he merely blows on them and they wither and strong wind carries them away like stubble. To whom then will you compare me that I will be his equal? says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who has created these heavenly bodies. The one who brings out their host by the number, he calls them all by name because the greatness of his might and the strength of his power. Not one is missing. Why, O Jacob, do you say and declare, O Israel, my, name, my way is hidden from the Lord and the justice due me escapes the notice of my God? Do you not know have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not become tired or grow weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He gives strength to the weary, and to him who has no might, he increases power. Even youths grow weary and tired, and vigorous young men stumble badly. But those who wait for the Lord, who expect, look for, and hope in him, will gain new strength and renew their power. They will lift up their wings and rise up close to God like eagles rising toward the sun. They will run and not become weary. They will walk and not grow tired. A lot of this here is just basically stating a lot of the idea that Israel, 
the people of Israel, which we have been grafted into that, that grouping, into the people of Israel. We are now in the salvation saving message of the Lord because of his death on the cross. They are basically complaining and saying, God, you do not see our troubles. You do not see us. You are not here for us. And God basically answers them back and says, who are you to one question me, but I also, I see you. And if you abide and you wait in me and you wait on me, I will make you strong. That's just something that happened this morning. And I think it kind of applies into what I would like to go into is John 15. Well, it's kind of like John 14 here. We'll start there. Because a lot of this hinges on hinges on the spirit being in you so Jesus is about to leave he's about or about to be crucified and he's telling his disciples that he's gonna send the spirit so in 14 26 but the helper comforter advocate intercessor counselor strengthener or your and standby the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name in my place to prepare to represent me and act on my behalf will teach you all things and he will help you remember everything that I have told you so if, you're, if you have trouble remembering anything that I say today or even what I'm trying to like remember the Lord's gonna remind me and then he's also gonna remind you of anything that you need to know and understand and teach you the the trick I think I've found a lot in the last two months is to memorize scripture that's how i've been able to combat a lot of those thoughts a lot of those issues and remain in him here it says i am the true vine my father is the vine dresser every branch in me does not bear fruit he takes away and every branch that continues to bear fruit he repeatedly prunes so that it will bear fruit even richer and finer fruit you are already clean because of the word which I have given you, the teachings which I have discussed with you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you, just as no branches can bear fruit by itself without remaining in the vine, neither can you bear fruit, producing evidence of your faith unless you remain in me. So here we're seeing a few a picture of the vine dresser who is God. You see the vine which is Jesus in whom we're remaining connected to, and you see us as the branches. When we begin to grow in the Lord, and we actually remain in Him, what God does, and it's not His punishment, it's not really, discipline even says He does that because He loves us. He's trying to direct us somewhere. He's trying to direct us in a, in a path of righteousness. And what it will do is He prunes you, and that might feel a little bit painful, but He's doing it for our good. He's trying to clean us. So when we see even with the disciples, and I believe Luke 9, they go out and they start healing the sick. They start like delivering people. They start causing all these things that the Lord said that he could do. And they come back and they're like, well, who's going to be the greatest? And Jesus said that, don't, don't be concerned about who's the greatest. And he starts correcting them and gets, gets the heart of the issue of pride because he doesn't want that in you. He wants you to be able to grow closer to him in relationship. my notes this is where things get fun so some practical ways to abide and to allow him not only just to prune you but to actually just be able to think on the things of the Lord is one we can be conscientious throughout the day we sit back we take inventory of kind of what we're, where our thoughts are at. we develop checkpoints throughout the day to establish a major truth so whatever you, if you've read the scriptures at all today, try to find that one verse that you can remind yourself, this is who I am in Christ. Two, you can wait and listen, so you can get in a quiet place. And if you keep hearing these voices that keep coming at you, and you're like, I don't know how to get these out, and I keep trying to, keep trying to say, don't think about it, you almost think about it more. We start to, what I'll just, the chapter I've been going through is Romans 8, and it's really caused a lot of, I feel like, revelation and understanding. So when I start to feel down on myself and I start to tell myself, you're worthless, you're not worth anything, you can't make it, you're not going to be healed, you're not going to do what the Lord has called you to do, I just start quoting those scriptures, and it resets my mind. It's kind of like making a loud noise or clapping in front of a baby that's crying. They suddenly have to pay attention to what's going on. 
So you just start saying, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through him, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life has set you free from the law of sin and death. So right there, we're already getting pretty much the whole gospel. You are now no longer able to be judged based off of what you do or your works or the law of sin and all of those things in the Old Testament. But you are now set free from that law of sin and death because Jesus Christ came and died, washed away those sins, set you free from that principle, that overlying thing, because our hearts and our spirit, the flesh, is at enmity, which means hostility. We are enemies of God until he came, died for us, and we, once we accept him into our lives, we say, you are Lord, you are King, you are ruler of my life, and I will follow you. That is when he's able to do a work in you. So verse 3 then is for, the, for, what, for what the law was powerless to do because of flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to become a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh. And that just right there, just those three verses, if I just keep repeating those, I will then all of a sudden realize, I'm like, my issues right now, this sin, this, this temptation, these issues, now are, not, are his. He's taken them. It's just a practice. It's more practical than we 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 think it is because we get in these places of like, oh, it's just a we get in the hyper spiritual or I'm not mature enough or I'm not in this place. But no, all you have to do is look at the word, and just keep repeating it, keep repeating it, keep repeating it, and then the Lord will track back those things into other passages, other verses, because it says therefore. Well, then you got to read the chapter before, and then you got to read the chapter before, and it just all connects into itself. In Psalms 1, this is another example of what, what we, basically giving you more, uh, I don't even know what you want to call it, proof, I guess, more of the, the commandments in Scripture, the promises of what, what it'll be like if we meditate on His Word. So Psalms 1 says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers or ridiculers but his delight is in the law of the Lord and on his law his precepts and his teachings he habitually meditates day and night and he will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season its leaves do not wither and whatever he does he prospers and comes to maturity that brings us back to John 15 where he is the vine dresser he is the one pruning us he is the one growing the fruit the fruits of the Spirit, again, are love, joy, peace, patience. We are going to be able to experience those as we abide in Him, as we repeat those scriptures, as we walk this life out. As we try, as we begin to do that, we also, in Galatians, I'll just read off on Galatians here. We've got the, I have it written down. 1280. <laughs> So in Romans 8, uh, let's see, is it 5? The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. Here in Galatians 5.19, it says, Now the practices of sinful nature are clearly evident. They are sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, total irresponsibility, lack of self-control, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions that promote heresies, envy, drunkenness, riotous behavior, and other things like these. He warns us beforehand, just that I did previously, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. And so in Romans 8, we talk about the mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the, the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the, the flesh is hostile to God. It cannot submit to God's law, nor can it please God. And then as we continue, the verses that I would love for you guys to remember is Romans 8, 10. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body, our flesh, is subject to death, the Spirit gives life. If the Spirit of Him, who raised, which is God, Him who raised Jesus from the dead, is living in you, 
the Spirit of Christ will also bring life to your mortal bodies because of His Spirit who lives in you. So you guys can all, in Romans 3 or 4, it talks about all have fallen sh short of the glory of God and all have sinned. So I would encourage you that if you want peace in your mind, peace with God, and you want that justification, that righteousness to run, run in your lives, to give your life to the Lord, to stand in it, to abide in Him, to take those nutrients, those 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 nutrients in Philippians uh, 4, it kind of talks about how what the mind what the mind is. It's, you, you think on the good things. You think on pure things. You think on what what is holy and just. And um, that brings life. As, as our soul prospers, our body will prosper as well. So those are just some minor, not minor, small keys that make a big impact in our lives. And that is pretty much all I have. I don't know if there's anything else, Michael. Do you have something? I don't know. Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't even know how to end any of these things. So, anyways, are we eating next? Is that what's gonna happen? Or? Yeah, I could bless the food here. Our Lord, I just thank you. Thank you for your righteousness. We thank you for your goodness and your peace and your joy. We thank you for dying on the cross for our sins, so we could be return to right relationship with you thank you for this group of people that you would bless them that you would heal them that you would feed them with your word and give them opportunities and an understanding and observation of what they can do to grow closer to you to walk with you i thank you for the food i pray that you'd bless it to our bodies i thank you for your provision in our lives and your name amen